Hey fellow explorers, so I recently started a new YouTube channel, really just in my spare time, and after 23 videos it was accepted into the YouTube Partner Program just a few short weeks ago, and uh, after 23 videos, that's maybe longer than some people make videos about, you'll find videos that people talk about, I got my channel monetized after one video, how to go viral immediately. That's not what this video is about. This video is about how I went about on a leisurely kind of pace, on a regular sort of perspective, growing this channel from zero subscribers to currently 2,000 subscribers, which is way faster than my channel here at Yellow Productions, which I've been doing since 2008, which you might look at it and go, Chris, 300 and some on thousand, that's pretty good. We are also 16 years into the Yellow Productions travel channel. And so in this video, I wanna share with you everything I've learned on this journey that I put into the new channel. And I also wanna share with you my biggest mistake on starting that new channel, which maybe you can benefit from learning from my mistakes if you're looking to start a new channel or you've already started, but you're just getting going or you're experienced and you might just be like, Chris, what's your theory on it? Or you're just curious about what the behind the scenes thinking on all this YouTube stuff is. Well, there's a little bit of entertaining stuff in this video for all of y'all here. Now, before I get into the actual channel, what it was, how I started, I want to start with a little bit of backstory and motivation just so you understand where I'm coming from with the new channel. So my inspiration story for this new channel is that uh, life history. Uh, I started this channel, Yellow Productions, in 2008, so doing this for 16 years. I started my second channel, The Office Survival Guide, uh, about five years ago, and for those of you who hang out here a lot, you'll know that uh, I also am employed in the software development field. So I spend a lot of time in front of computers, offices, working with people, meetings, that sort of thing. So that channel was all about helping people that were in office jobs that could be technical, engineering, biotech, whatever. Somebody who works with a lot of people in meetings, discussions. Uh, and I think it was doing reasonably well at the start, but then... COVID hit, uh, and everybody went home from the office. And at the same time, OC Girl and I welcomed a baby into the world, and so I put the office survival guide on indefinite hold, because nobody was going to the office, we had a small child, wanted to focus on being parents. But as parents, at our daughter got to watching YouTube and YouTube Kids, uh, I was sitting around also watching YouTube Kids with her and watching the kind of videos she watches, Baby Shark, Coco Melon, and then Blippi. And if you are a parent of kids that are probably 10 years old or younger, you'll probably know what all of those things are. If you uh, don't, uh, like you don't know what they are, means you probably don't have kids. Uh, baby Shark is like the most viewed video on YouTube. It's this cartoon of this baby shark that goes do 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 do. Coco Melon is a kids cartoon channel that is the number one like subscribe to channel on YouTube. And then Blippi is a channel that's kind of like the modern Pee Wee Herman, uh, a guy who goes around to all these kids activities and kids love to watch him enjoying these kids activities. Uh, and so, oh, he gets, the, all these channels, they get millions of views doing it. I'm not gonna make cartoons. I'm not very good at drawing. I'm not very good at singing, uh, but I figure, Blippi, this guy, my daughter, she likes to go to all of the same places that Blippi likes to go to. In fact, she watches videos and then says, Papa, can we go here? And so we started to go into some of these places and I was like, well, I'm here. I've got editing software. I've got cameras. Why don't I record some of her interactions at these activities and put them up on YouTube and maybe the same kind of people that enjoy watching these other videos will enjoy not just an adult going around doing it, but will enjoy a kid, somebody their age to do it. Uh, and so that was my inspiration story for the channel because honestly, a lot of these like kids live action channels are really mediocre in their production and editing quality. Not to say that mine is a whole lot better, but I'm like, well, I can at least do as good as some of these other channels can. And so I've got my 10 step process now going through starting her channel focused on kids as the audience. And so step one, uh, 
for starting this channel and it was my step one and I think it's it's everybody's step one if you're looking to start a new channel is actually not to start with the channel theme that you want to make a channel on uh, but really to think about the audience what kind of people are you trying to target with these videos and so in the yellow productions case here uh all y'all. You enjoy travel. I hope so. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be here. Well, maybe if you're here for this video, uh, you might be new to the channel, and in that case, you might be interested in just what it takes to succeed on YouTube. I also do a lot of camera reviews, and so travel tech, and so all these things are kind of a confluence that come together, but generally, the audience that I see for Yellow Productions are people who like to travel. Um, now, in this case of the this channel that I created, the audience uh, is a two-part audience as the way I see it. One, kids, because they have to want to watch the videos, but two, parents, because the parents are gonna watch the videos along with the kids, just like I did for Baby Shark and Blippi, and if they don't like them, they'll find other ones. If they do like them, they'll put more on for their kids or perhaps even subscribe. Uh, and then kind of threefold with the kids, the parents, Parents are looking for activities to go through with their kids, and so as much as these videos might perhaps be entertaining, they might also be a little informative for parents who are actually looking to take their kids to these things. All right, so whatever your channel is, I would say think about the kind of people that you want to see watching it, and then step two uh, is to then decide on what the channel theme looks like. What's the format of the videos look like? Here on Yellow Productions, there's a few different formats we have on this channel. Uh, I've got the standard like travel guide, which is like everything you need to know before you go to a place. Hotel reviews are another format or kind of another show within a show. Uh, gear reviews are another. These live streams, these every one is roughly an hour long. It's roughly me with a talking head with some pictures up here. They're all a pretty similar style. So thinking about what the format of the videos look like. And so what I decided for this new channel was that the format, much like a blippy video, is going to be somebody with a camera, namely me, following around my daughter through these activities and basically watching how much fun she has. Uh, and that was the beginning of it. And so a lot of scenes like this behind with a camera saying like, where is she going to take us? What fun is she going to have? Um, now, I think a mistake that a lot of YouTube channels make when they first start out is they have like zero focus on what types of videos to make. And so you'll see the channel will have like challenge videos and reaction videos and house tours and restaurant reviews. And the problem with that is that if you watch one video on this channel, like you like their eating contest and you watch it, and then you go back to the channel to be like, great, I want to find more eating chat, eating, eating videos, but you find out they don't have any more eating videos and everything else on the channel is about repairing boats. You're like, oh, well, I guess the channel isn't really for me. And so you want to, uh, as you build a channel, build up enough like and related content that when people finally do find it, they come in and they can find all these other things that they like too. Uh, now, my however comma here is that if you're like seriously just beginning on the journey of what it means to YouTube and like just getting started to make videos, then honestly making any videos are fine because you'll just need to get some reps and sets under your belt to like make videos that uh, sound good, look good, edited decently. And then after you've got a hang of that, then you can go in to be like, okay, well now that I've made a hundred bad videos, I can focus on making a few good ones. And then what do I want those to look like going forward? All right, so after you've decided, or in this case, after I decided on the audience and the channel uh, theme and style and format, then I needed to pick a name for the channel. Uh, and the name's important because when people find videos on YouTube, there's a few pieces of information they see. They see the video title, they see the video thumbnail, they see the channel name, and they see the channel icon. Assuming they're looking at long forms, if they're looking at shorts, they see it a little bit differently, but generally they see a channel icon and they can see a little bit of a channel name too, just distributed differently. Uh, and I think it's important to have a channel name that when they look at it kind of evokes uh, what you're going for in that thing. So when people look at it, they're like, ah, that looks like a channel that would have the kind of content that I'm looking for. 
Of course, I can give you the actual uh, con contrarian perspective about what happens when you don't do that. Yellow Productions doesn't tell you anything about this channel other than I like yellow. Probably, if I was to redo and remake Yellow Productions, I would call it Yellow Productions Travel Guides, so that when you saw the channel, you'd immediately know, oh, this is a channel about travel, or maybe not travel guides, but maybe Yellow Productions Travel, probably something with the word travel in it. Okay, so uh, when I was creating the name for the channel, I wanted something unique, something that wasn't already taken. I used a thesaurus to look up words, and I was like, well, a lot of other channels that have uh, younger girls, they put princess in it, because people like to call their daughters princess, and then I found this word spunky, which in American English means full of spirit, courageous, and determined. This was my biggest mistake. This wasn't taken and I wasn't, oh, it sounds like a good word. Well, apparently that word in British English means something entirely different from a slang perspective that people are like, Chris, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't use that name. And so now the channel is called The Curious Princess. I will say that probably uh, that being the biggest mistake is something that I think held back the early videos. But now with the name change, I think we're seeing some success again. We'll talk about that more as we go. Uh, I see Kathy in the chat say, I love this new name. Brandon says, I've been a fan of the rebranding. Uh, and uh, Kathy said, reps and sets. Oh, when I talked about the repetitions and sets like in a in like a working out sort of term, right? If you're making videos, you need to like repeat, repeat and go over and over again. Uh, uh, right. And Barbara says, it would be nice to see you vlogging with your daughters, just one at this point. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the evolution of this channel too. Okay, so now step four uh, was after I've got the audience and I've got the channel theme and style and I got the channel name was to create some channel art because when people watch a video afterwards, they can go to the channel page and the channel page, there's this banner looking thing and then there's also a channel icon and so I wanted those things to be whimsical and evoke fun. So I, uh, I'm i not good at art, this is not my art. I hired an artist on Fiverr uh, who is the same artist that I used to design my stuff for the office survival guide and said hey uh, I want a kind of like cartoon anime style character that looks like my daughter with the pigtails that are right here, wearing some yellow, looking like she's running and having a good time. And in it's an, and like that art, what do I do with that art? Well, you know, that art uh, can go on t-shirts, for example. That art is also the uh, channel icon. That art appears in lots of different places. So, you know, I spent a couple hundred bucks on this art, but it's been well worth it over and over again. And when people go to the channel, they don't just see nothing or letters or something tackily put together in Photoshop. They see something that looks like, oh, this looks like somebody's actually trying here. Uh, but I would say this wasn't like a, like a process of like, send a couple hundred dollars and get some art. It was like, make it look like this. Here's examples, here's her pictures. That, those first iterations are not what I'm talking about. We probably went through 10 iterations back and forth uh, before we got to what this looks like here. Uh, Kathy says, I love the magnifying glass in the word curious. I thought that worked out pretty well. And this was with the most recent uh, rebrand of the channel. Amber says, I love the Sherlock magnifying glass on the theme. Uh, love it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Amber. Okay, so uh, after going through a bunch of iterations on this, and, and this is one to say that, you know, you can start with something, you can draw it yourself, and then when you find out you're getting some views, you can hire somebody and help you out. I think one of the, like, the pitfalls that people also have on YouTube as a medium is, like, to have a successful channel, you have to be, it seems like if you're a solo creator, you have to be good at so many different things. You have to be good at being on camera, being a voice, editing videos, shooting videos, making thumbnails, writing descriptions. And it turns out there's a lot of people out there in the world that might be better at some of those things than you are. Um, and their sites like Fiverr, Upwork, or those sorts of things where you can find those people to help you out for uh, just a few dollars. All right, so uh, now let's go on to step five, which is to 
Film some videos. All right, well, you can't launch a channel without any video, so you gotta film some videos. I put this picture here because I thought it might be funny if the Curious Princess uh, has a mukbang or eating, 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 vi we haven't quite got to the eating videos, but I'm sure we will at that point, but when I uh, just saw this image of her eating the spaghetti, I was like, all right, we gotta do that. By the way, the stickers, we put them on everything. You can see one of those stickers on her water bottle right there. Okay. Um, so, to start the channel, the first thing is to create a, in my case, was to create a channel trailer. The channel trailer is um, a video that plays when unsubscribed people view the channel for the first time. Not all channels have to have a channel trailer, but I feel uh, it's worth, like Mr. Beast doesn't have a channel trailer, but my channel does, Yellow Productions does. So does The Curious Princess. I think it's a worthwhile exercise in creating one to be like, what is 30 seconds of content that I'm going to put together to describe what this channel is? And so I, uh, OC Girl and I, we like Star Trek. And so we took some words from Star Trek and I made a channel trailer. That was the first video. I have since updated the branding of it to Curious Princess and I've since, uh, haven't paid for a voice actor this time. Why did I pay for a voice actor? I paid for somebody to do a Patrick Stewart impersonation. So, uh, since it was a Star Trek theme, there was somebody that sounded like Patrick Stewart. So I want you to listen to the first trailer, which was with, uh, like a professional voice coach. And then we'll take a look at the second one that I did. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and push hmm, this, uh, this button, <laughs> this button, this button, ooh, this button right here. All right, great. And we're gonna see the Curious Princess channel here. So this is the channel as it exists today. We're still not at the end of this, the story about like how we're here at monetization of number of subscribers. We're still at the beginning. This is the current channel trailer. But if we come here and look at videos and then we scroll down, da, 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 da. this is the first video, the channel trailer. So let me, it's 30 seconds. We'll just go ahead and watch this. These are the adventures of the spunky princess, her continuing mission to have the most fun in the world and to seek out adventure at exciting destinations to boldly go where no princess has gone before. Click that subscribe button now to join the princess on her epic voyage. But be warned, you'll have so much fun watching that you'll be assimilated. Resistance is futile. All right, so there we go. That's the channel trailer. But you arrive and you say like, okay, that gives me a good idea as to what this channel is about. Uh, I have since redone it with my voice and the rebrand, so we can take a look at what that looks like maybe a year later. I think it's worthwhile to refresh these channel trailers if your channel direction changes or names changes or things like that because you don't want them to look stale. So this is the current channel trailer with my voice instead of the Patrick Stewart impersonator. These are the adventures of the Curious Princess, her continuing mission to have the most fun in the world and to seek out adventure at exciting destinations, to boldly go where no princess has gone before. Click that subscribe button now to join the princess on her epic voyage. But be warned, you'll have so much fun watching that you'll be assimilated. Resistance, my friend, is futile. All right, so there we go. Slightly different vibe, slightly different voice, few different words in there. Uh, and so after the channel trailer, after creating that, then I launched the channel with one other video. And in that case, that was this video, which was a action scene running around the San Diego Children's Museum. So let me show you a little bit what this looks like, just so you know kind of what you're looking at in this channel. Oh, it's an ad. It's an ad, of course. Maybe <laughs> because this channel is now part of the YouTube Partner Program. Okay, Hello, adventure seekers. Today, we're going to be following the spunky princess around the new children's museum in San Diego, California. This is the spunky princess's favorite museum she has been to so far. It is a big three-story open space with lots of fun for kiddos of all. Okay, so that's a little bit of that video. Follow around, see what she likes to do. Uh, this video did not go on to like amazing, uh, amazing success. And uh, looking at these, you can see to this point, it's had 
5,000 views. Most of those came recently, actually, and we'll talk about why in a little bit. Uh, then we made a video here at the Natural History Museum. Uh, that has 842 views. Some bubble play, 463. Some videos that didn't have amazing success until we got to video number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is the one that you see some rainbows in there at the Thrill It Fun Center. This one has. Today we are at the, the first Thrill one. It oh. Fun Center, California. In California. What? 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 You probably can't hear me, and I talk in both ways. This was the first one to go on to some sec success. This one, like, immediately after publishing it within the first week, had like 10,000 views, which was so much more than the other ones. Let me just share with you the intro on this. Today, we are at the Thrill It Fun Center in Orange, California. This is $16 to come in here for an all-day ticket. It's a three-story play structure, and let's... Okay, so that's a little bit of that one. That's just a short one. This video uh, was not super long, three minutes and 50 seconds, but it was the first video to have some success on the channel. And so something you'll find most YouTubers do after they have some success is look at it and study and then say, okay, what was successful about that video and how do I replicate that? success. Uh, and somebody says I should meow if live. Meow. Yes, this video is live. All right, great. Um, so thank you uh, for people asking me to meow. Okay, so uh, one thing I looked at this thumbnail in comparison to others is that uh, it has a, like a rainbow background. It has the princess looking at you and it was of a indoor playground. So then I said like, okay, there's this other one at this place I called kids empire let's try to replicate the same thing let's make a similar looking thumbnail let's put the rainbows in the background and let's have some rainbow at the beginning so here's a little bit of that beginning of this one we love go here let's go fellow thrill seekers today we are at the kids empire in anaheim california this indoor playground has a really amazing okay so we see what that one was and you can see at this point that video has, dun, 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 scrolling down, uh, that video, it's the one with her and the balls, has 167,000 views. That one popped off probably about 120,000 of those came in the first month after uploading that video, but at some point it had like a pretty sharp tank. Uh, and that video came with a lot of dislikes, which I later come to think that that was the people from uh, British English speaking places not liking the term spunky because uh, when we change it to curious later then uh, lots of goodness came of recent ones we'll get to that in a moment all right so rinse and repeat another video similar style rainbow 24,000 views then I did some more that didn't uh, achieve great all that great success, but you'll see lots of different styles and formats. Not as many rainbow colors over here in these things. Uh, and then we've got this video from a month ago, a year later. If you can see the view count on this one, 379,000 views in less than a month. This is the one, the single video that popped this channel into being admitted into the YouTube Partner Program, which is at least a uh, thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours on long form videos. You can see this was part with the rebrand, so the channel is now Curious Princess. That's what I say in the video. What I also did differently in this one, I'm gonna roll the beginning and then maybe I'll tell you that. After Honda we skip the ad. HRV with impressive sporty style. Hey fellow thrill seekers, today we are at where are we, Princess? <laughs> We're at Billy B's, the biggest indoor playground in Orange County, and the prince is going to show you how much fun this place is. All right, let's go. All right, now this indoor playground is... Okay, so uh, things that you'll notice that were changes just right off the bat from that intro was it was not just uh, the princess from the back, but it was the princess from the front. Me next to her, her being really excited, let's go, the rainbow colors. And I also think there's some importance to the uh, child and the adult. I was at VidCon a few months ago, and I heard from a YouTube employee. I was talking about starting a channel for my daughter, and they were like, you should really consider having an adult in there too, because some of the, like, 
algorithms on YouTube to like protect children. If there's only children in the video and not adults, then the algorithm sometimes may suppress those videos. And so now a little bit of the new format is father and daughter having fun in the video, which is what that one was. <laughs> and Kathy says, I think that you were, uh, I think because you were in it. All right, well, there we go. I try to try to be a little modest. But anyway, yeah, to make it like both dad and daughter can have some fun at this place as a dynamic duo. Uh, and so uh, I want to go ahead and show you like some of the back end analytics that you can see on these things. Kudge Full of Love says, uh, did you use SEO assistant tools to make this channel or full experimental? So much quality info. So on Yellow Productions here, I use both TubeBuddy and vidIQ for some of their analytics and things like that. I did not pay for them on the Curious Princess channel, and so everything on there has mostly just been from my brain noggin perspective. Um, but uh, let's go and bring this over here, and let's click this button now. Uh, okay, so this is now the back end of the Curious Princess channel. This is called uh, YouTube Studio. So this is where, as a YouTube creator, you can see all the data and analytics of the channel. And so when you first start looking at things, they show you a 28-day view, what's been going on in the last 28 days. But I think it's educational to, like, look at the channel over its lifetime. And so this was the channel's... Uh, you know, creation when I uploaded the first video back in 2022. And as I mouse over, you can see the number of views per day. That's what that number is. This gigantic spike right here whoop, with like 52,000 views in a day. That's when I uploaded the Kids Empire video. That did well. And then whoop, flat line. And you can see none of these other videos. I've been experimenting with some shorts and things like that. None of these other videos led to any success until that most recent one, the most recent Billy B's video. And now you can see those numbers starting to chart and charting pretty decently every day. So now we'll bring this back to the last 90 days. And you can see how that goes a flat line and then an immediate jump. Now, if you will... Pay attention to one of these things if we look at the, so like, well, at back here on February 24th, in total, the channel was getting 100 views a day. Uh, and now it's getting t tens of thousands per day. Uh, if we look in this content section and we look at how many total views the biggest indoor playground has had, it has had 380,000 views. That's pretty much just one month of views. If you go back here to analytics and then you see, uh, well, actually this includes two things. So uh, the biggest indoor playground in the last 28 days has had 309,000 views. 100,000 views have come from other videos. Not because those people or viewers were coming in the front door to those videos before, but they're coming in the front door to the new Billy B's video, and then they're finding all of these other videos that they're watching afterwards, because you can see now, if we look at these top viewed videos, all the rainbow colored ones that I showed you before are the top performers with thousands of views per day. And if we dive into any one of those, like this one, and then you can go in and see all the traffic is coming, 94% of it from suggested videos. What suggested video? We can come over here to reach and uh, look and see what content is suggesting this video. In this case, it's actually a blippy video was suggesting a lot of the content, uh, but you can see the one of herself from Billy Bees was suggesting a lot of the content. So that's a pretty similar uh, view. Like if we look at this recent buttery slime video that I posted, just trying out a new format, kind of like a toy review sort of format. But if you look and say, hey, where are the views for this one coming from, from suggested, uh, you will see they're all other videos on the channel that are pointing back to these new videos. The point of this that I want to make uh, is so we've gone through what I'll call step six, which is like find some success and then refine. If you look at any 
successful YouTube channel, really, you'll see this happen. You'll see not a lot of success for a while, some success on some video, and then the creator going like, hey, that did well. Let me try to figure out what people liked about that. Refine, refine, refine before finding that magic formula. Um, and, uh, you know, but uh, that doesn't mean you have to be penciled into a formula. Like here on Yellow Productions, that formula is generally like anything about Vegas. People like anything about Vegas. Well, not anything about Vegas, but there's a certain formula that I've figured out about like, if you make a video like this about Vegas, then people tend to watch it. Um, and uh, the other thing with those rainbow videos is that the impressions click-through rate is high. So we're gonna go back to the screen share here, boom, boom, boom. And so like this video, the, this slime review that I didn't um, do an amazing amount of work on the thumbnail on, just a quick picture of the slime, has a impressions click-through rate of 4%. That means 4% of the time that YouTube shows the picture and the title to somebody, they click on it. Now, if we compare that to the impressions click-through rate on the biggest indoor playground, Billy Bees, uh, then we can see here an average of 8.9%, so a double click-through rate, and at one point in time, it was a 20% click-through rate, meaning that one out of every five times that YouTube showed this video to somebody, they clicked on it or watched it. As videos get shown to more and more people, this number tends to go down just by YouTube widening the audience of people that watch it. And then the other interesting statistics, 260,000 unique views, 380,000 views, meaning that 100,000 of those views are repeat viewers that have come back to watch the video again. No doubt kids like to watch some of the same, same things again. If you look at the audience uh, breakdown on this, you can see these are like new, these are returning people. The age, you don't get statistics of under uh, 13 years because YouTube doesn't target kids. But in the top geographies here, a lot more UK, which was not coming in any of the spunky videos for uh, reasonable terms. And so that uh, foot stomps my belief that the name change of the brand, plus the slight difference of what the video actually did uh, helped with that. And then, uh, <clears throat> after this video popped off, four days later, I was able to hit the button to apply to the YouTube Partner Program, uh, and within two days, got this email back to say, Chris, welcome to the YouTube Partner Program. I actually didn't say Chris, I said Curious Princess, since I'm the, I guess you could say, executive agent for the channel. If you wonder where the few dollars this channel's generating are going, they are all gonna go into the Curious Princess College Fund, because uh, I think by the time she goes to college, it's gonna be really expensive, and so we need to start saving now. Uh, all right, before we open to Q&A, I do have a few more things to share with you, just some other general notes that I took uh, around this journey. One, I made a bunch of shorts, no real great traction on those yet on this channel. I'm still trying to experiment to find out what the kids' shorts feel and act like. Um, the curation of the channel page itself, I think, is important. And so the channel page is uh, this place that people land right here, this channel page. And if you go to some new channels, like there's no channel banner, there's no art, and then all that there is is like a videos section. And so you like you come to the Curious Princess page, you're like, oh, there's a there's a good description of what the channel is. There's uh, the channel banner. There's this for you section, which is like the algorithmically picked list of videos that YouTube thinks someone might want to watch. There's the videos, there's the shorts. And then I've made a playlist for the best indoor playgrounds in Orange County. And this list I curate, and so I move the better ones to the top to basically like curate what people see when they come to this page. Uh, if you like look at the Yellow Productions channel, um, there's like a lot more things you can curate and customize in here. So uh, like at the top of this, I got to thank you to all of the Yellow Productions channel members. Is my point to thank all of y'all. Anybody in the chat that has a little panda next to them, 
uh, their channel member. So thank you for your support. The algorithm we picked for you on Yellow Productions, I make, I have this custom playlist called latest videos that I then put up here because videos kind of has a tendency to like mix a lot of things together or not. And so I want to have a curated list in a particular order. And so that's this, there's 500 videos in this playlist, but it just allows me to put whatever video I want at the beginning there. If I'm doing something live, you'll always see the live stream right there at the front. I then have a playlist below that titled The Best of Yellow Productions. This is my curated list of things that I want people to see at the beginning. There is a list that you can algorithmically pick from YouTube titled like The Most Popular. That is not this. If you looked at the most popular videos on Yellow Productions, they would be my Vegas videos, but I strategically want to put all these other ones up here at the top before the Vegas ones because everybody's just going to come back for the Vegas videos. Then I got the Vegas playlist. Then I've got my things to know travel series. Again, a carefully collected set so that you come here like, oh, Chris does things on Singapore. Oh, that one's done well. 500,000 views. This guy must know what he's doing, but also smaller things like Sedona that only has 16,000 because I think it's a good video. I want more people to see it. The Disney cruise because I want people to see that there's some cruise content here. Everybody loves Hawaii and Raymond, and of course, there's the Taipei one. Whole set of guides on travel advice. I want people to see that too. Some of these videos continue to do well year over year, even six years later, hotel room hacks. Southern California is a big area. I've got separate playlists on San Diego, Orange County, and Los Angeles, but I've bundled them all into this one for this channel. There's a collaborations playlist so people can come and see, oh, like Krista stuff with other creators, that's cool. I got the Japan travel guides that are down here because it's another big emphasis for the channel. Uh, past live streams, which are here, and then uh, just a whole bunch of other playlists because they're there, and then links to some of these channels. And I put shorts down to below just because they exist, but I don't think that's the focus of Yellow Productions. So that's how I've decided to curate the list of things here, but I think that curation is important on the channel page. Um, Yep. 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 Okay. Um, now, I think another thing to think about when you're starting out a new channel is to consider the audience. If you're going for lots of views, you might want to consider how big your potential audience could actually be. So here in a travel channel, it's fairly big, but on the Office Survival Guide channel, much, much smaller. There's just way less people that are interested in a video about how to interview for a job or how to write a resume. Um, uh, but then I think uh, for the Curious Princess channel, kids is like an even broader group of people than uh, travel. Now, uh, the topic of a channel can totally drive, doesn't totally, does uh, totally drive the advertising rates. And so kids content is some of the lowest revenue per view because kids content can't be targeted. When you upload a video, and you tag it as made for kids, then there's no comments on it. Um, there's a lot of things that can't happen on that video. You you know, uh, people who are placing ads against it can't say placed against boys or girls or people who like cereal or those sorts of things, but that's all the stuff that advertisers can do on normal long form videos. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and go uh, to Q and A now. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, and with that, I need to take a uh, drink here. What is Chris drinking today? Chris is drinking a strawberry latte by Sanko from Japan. Mm. I bought this one from Tokyo Central Supermarket in Gardena, the biggest Japanese supermarket in the mainland of the USA that I also made a video on, the walkthrough of that coming out soon. Um, okay, Amber says, Chris, did you find the price you paid for the art and voiceover is reasonable fare? How did you decide where to go for assistance? I went to fiverr.com uh, to get those things. I Yes, I found the price reasonable. I mean, I picked people that I thought looked professional enough, but cheap enough. The voice acting stuff was like a hundred bucks and the art was a couple hundred bucks. The art was more iterations and took longer. Um, so I, it was worth it cause it was a, like the graphic art is a skill that I just don't have. Uh, and so it's, it's worth any dollars for me to get something that looks, uh, professional. 
Uh, my dad, Electric Rick, says, Pure genius by a wonderful th son. Thank you so much, wonderful father. Uh, Kathy says, what is the partner program? The YouTube partner program is the official name for the YouTube advertising revenue sharing program. In order to uh, earn money from ads that run on videos on YouTube, you have to apply and be accepted into the YouTube Partner Program. The requirements are, if you're making long form videos, having at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. If you're making shorts, then it's a different like scheme of like millions of views or something like that um, for the Shorts channel because Shorts can uh, potentially have so many infinite views. Um, Points Traveler says, are you about to write off your Yellow Productions trip expenses for tax purposes? Uh, at this point, Yellow Productions does operate as a business. And so, yes, Chris does write off his business expenses against the income that comes back from AdSense. Justin Cosplay says, does kids content make less money on AdSense? It absolutely makes less money on AdSense. Um... This is where, like, I could show you the, uh, let's see here, let's go here, let's go to YouTube Studio, let's go to, I know you're not, you're not seeing this, but when I get to it, I'll pull it up and you'll see it. Uh, if we go to Revenue, then we go, uh, so, and I click this button, bum, 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 uh, you, are you seeing this? All right, maybe not? No, it's a different one. Haha, <laughs> wrong button. Too many screens. Bring this back over here. Bring this back over here. The button that I'm looking for is this button. Ooh. Okay, uh, all right. So here on the screen, you can see uh, in the last 28 days, the channel has had 400,000 views of an estimated revenue of 200-ish dollars, which is 50 cents for every 1,000 views. So uh, that is significantly less uh, than non-kids content. Okay, click this button, click this button, click this button back here. Move this back over here. Um, Paul says, uh, how much time have you invested into the Curious Princess channel so far? Thank you. Um, I don't know if I have like a real big accounting of hours, but if you looked at the accounting of hours versus the $200 that we've earned for the Curious Princess's college fund. Uh, it's below minimum wage, but I've really been looking at creating the videos more as like places that she wants to go. And so we're not really like going out of the way to do it. I mean, we are like, I am bringing my camera and wearing a yellow shirt and we're making the video. Like we're definitely like taking time to do that, but it's an enjoyable activity for the both of us, certainly I have to come back and edit them, but I don't, I don't edit them a lot. Like they're, I try to record them in a way that I can do the least amount of editing. I mean, if you like beginning to end, Chris, how many total hours? Somewhere, somewhere probably less than 500, I would say over the like 18 months or something that the channel has been out there, which I think is, reasonable for something for people to do in their spare time. That's really kind of how I've looked at it. That's why there's been gaps when I've made videos. It's just been like, I definitely focus on the Yellow Productions Travel Channel and then this one just, oh, this seems like a good thing to do. Let's go ahead and do this now. I have no set schedule. And I think some of those things about like, ah, oh, you gotta have a video out every week, every day, daily vlogging, this and that. Like when you're just getting started, it's all, it's just too much, and uh, then people collapse. Justin says, uh, given how good rainbow thumbnails, maybe you should be named Rainbow Princess, so Yellow Productions would, oh, there you go, Yellow would definitely be a part of it. Uh, we do have Yellow uh, as a big part of her attire in the channel. Alex is having Teddy's Bigger Burger uh, in Hawaii this week. All right, Alex, enjoy. Uh, Pierce Chan says, how are your videos doing on TikTok? They seem to be paying creators much better now. Not really. I don't know that I found like a great, exciting home on TikTok. So uh, I think my videos are just a different, like from a long form perspective, are not really what people are looking for on TikTok. Yeah, I um, 
I we re-edit the Yellow Productions videos for Facebook, and they tend to do pretty good over there too. Uh, but on TikTok, they don't seem to do as wonderful. Amber says, do you edit the Curious Princess videos yourself? You've said before you have someone else edit the Yellow Productions videos. Yusaku edits many of the Yellow Productions trial videos, though not all. Uh, and yes, all of the Curious Productions videos I've edited myself. Uh, labor of love, <laughs> as, as opposed to anything else. Okay. Um... TV uh, wants my opinion of a very small travel itinerary, which is brunch in Orange, late lunch in Laguna Beach. Sounds like a good Orange County travel itinerary to me. Okay. Um, Rebecca says, Hi Chris, is there any strategy in how long a Curious Princess video is? I noticed a lot around five minutes, but then ones with the bigger views are over 15 minutes. Yeah, so my... My theory was that, uh, I don't know, you know, how long kids gonna watch videos? Like Baby Shark is like three minutes. A lot of these Coco Melon videos are three minutes. And so the initial videos that I made were short videos. And then I thought more about our viewing behavior at home. And when I, uh, like, if the Curious Princess is gonna watch some YouTube kids on television, for example, and I'm picking a video for her, because I do this. Turn the TV on, what do you want to watch? She might look at the list and say, I want to watch a Blippi video, and there's five on the list. And there's one Blippi video that's three minutes long, and there's one Blippi video that's an hour long. I'm gonna pick the hour long one, because uh, it's less time to then like pick the next video. Um, and so it does seem like um, for kids' videos, the longer videos do better, because I think there's a certain aspect of parents selecting that video and then if they do that then they want one that's gonna like run a long time I've also been finding just here on the main channel here in Yellow Productions I've done a few like extra long travel vlogs like the the Grand Canyon vlog the Singapore vlog uh, the Japan Atami Izu Peninsula that were an hour 90 minutes and lots of the uh, viewership um, surface is television on those. I think more and more people are watching things on TV, and so they're willing to watch long things. I mean, there'd be plenty of people who'd say like, Chris, these, nobody, nobody in their right mind is going to watch hour long live streams about whatever you do. But you know what, I watch hour long things. Sometimes I just listen to them in a car drive if I have a long car drive. Um, and clearly you all are here too. And so I think that's great. And like a live stream is one where like, when you're live, it advertises that you're live. And if it's too short, then you don't get any benefit from the fact that uh, the video was actually live. But as with the format, you know, I try to make these generally, these, li these live streams each about an hour so that roughly if you come back to one, you know how long it is. And so if you're like, oh, well, I'm gonna do a workout and I need an hour, I'm gonna mow the lawn. I'm like, I need an hour video. Like, okay, I'll dive into the Travel Tips by Chris playlist and I'll find one of those. Steven says, love your channel. Really enjoyed the Vegas videos. Thanks, Steven. Windy City says, hey, Chris, coming in from Las Vegas. Enjoying my time. Thanks for the awesome giveaway prize. Windy City Elevators. He won uh, the $250 planin.com hotel rebate giveaway, uh, which is still going on for the second and third chance drawings. If you want to win or you haven't looked at that, you can find it in last week's live stream that I did all about uh, answering your frequently asked questions about Yellow Productions. Uh, all you gotta do is go over to that video, sign up for planning.com. It's free, new hotel booking site that'll give you 40% off some great hotels. Uh, and you'll find a lot of my recommendations in there too. And you have until May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, to enter that. Uh, and anybody who books a hotel via planning.com is entered into a third chance drawing for a $250 rebate as well. Justin says, do you have any plans to do Disneyland for Curious Princess? So we signed up for Legoland annual passes this year, and I have to still make the Legoland travel guide, which is in the making, like I'm shooting it, but I haven't like finished shooting it yet, but I'm shooting a lot of like B-roll and ideas for what it's gonna look like. I think after Legoland this year, then we'll probably take the plunge into Disneyland next year. Uh, Amber says, I have a friend struggling with a channel. Do you have any tips for filming composition? They will watch the replay of this stream. Um, filming composition, I mean, I think that's a like complicated question, Amber. Um, but 
I think that I'll like I'll give you my like my one minute of uh, things that I think are important related to video production. Uh, I think one like it needs to look good. Uh, like it needs to look good, like the colors have to be vibrant, the light has to be good, it can't be too dark, it has to sound good, there has to be good audio. Uh, it's not to say that you need to have like a thousand dollar microphone over your head, but it can't be like echoey or boomy or too windy. Um, I also think that uh, related to like the thumbnail and then delivering on the value of the thumbnail pretty immediately so that when you click into the video, you're like, ah, that looks like what that was about. So if I've got a video of the Curious Princess on a rainbow slide and the first thing you see is um, uh, us and we're not anywhere that looks like a rainbow slide, like we're hanging out, uh, I don't know, in a supermarket or something, you'd be like, I don't think this is the video that I clicked on. So I think those things are important. What I would suggest really is that those things like analytics that I showed you, that your friend take a look at um, how long people watch the videos, when they drop off and try to analyze like, why are people leaving? And then on videos that are doing well, why are people staying? And then trying to replicate some of those things. Uh, Cottage Full of Love says, I love the long videos. Thank you for that uh, feedback. Meritocratic Mafia says, do you put a cap on screen time for the Curious Princess? I mean, not officially. Like, we don't have, like, a timer or things like that. Uh, but we certainly have, like, hey, like, if we're driving in the car someplace, she can watch YouTube Kids because it's pretty boring sitting in the back of the car. Uh, you know, when she comes home after preschool, uh, dinner time is, like, for family at the table, usually after dinner, we might go like outside or we might go to play. And so most of her uh, screen time tends to be after bath, shower for the night and then before bed. So there's only, you know, hour or two, depending upon how much of night owls we are in there that she gets some of those cartoons. And then uh, maybe in the morning, if we're like spending some extra time to get ready before we're going someplace, that's where she gets to watch the tunes. I feel like it's like a little bit like, um, I don't know, back in the day when you would watch Sunday morning cartoons for kids or something like that. And then like, maybe there'd be some on at nighttime too. So anyway, uh, Cotch Full of Love. So you don't need uh, cable when you have YouTube TV. Uh, I usually watch uh, videos on TV. All right, thank you, BN Lover. Uh, Joe wants to know, when are they going to rename San Diego Airport to Chris Rainey International Airport? I don't know, but if there's anybody on the board of uh, San Diego Airport, I would I would totally support that. Uh, Kathy says, I watch YouTube on TV all the time. Janelle says, uh, and Janelle, I love that you've made your channel icon uh, the picture there that you took at Resorts World with the Yellow Productions Crew shirt. Super awesome, Janelle. Like, triple, triple hearts for you. Can I give you like a, can I give you a heart on this? No, I don't think I can. Uh, all right. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, James says, will the Curious Princess take over her channel when she's old enough? Absolutely. Oh, I didn't click the button. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, the Curious Princess will take over her channel when she's old enough, if she wants to, if that's something that she wants to do. Right now, she absolutely loves making the videos, and like, for what it's worth, when we made this recent 400,000 view video, as we're like, going to the indoor playground, she's like, Papa, I wanna make a video. Bring your camera, Papa. And as we get to the parking lot, then she's like, Papa, don't forget to bring your camera. And then as we get inside, like, Papa, when are we gonna make the video? And then related to longer ones, you know, like if I finally turn the camera off, then she'll be like, I'm not done with the video. Like we're still making the video. So that's the other reason that they tend to uh, become longer. Uh, all right, uh, Brandon says, Janelle Travel's amazing channel icon, I agree. Uh, Alex says, John Wayne Airport is now Yellow Productions Airport. I love that. Um, Anna Janelle says, I feel famous. You should be famous, Janelle. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Amber says, my eyes can't see the little pic on the screen. Love that Janelle's pic was shared in larger format. So cute. Yes, if you want to see the larger picture, Yellow Productions community tab, uh, you will find it there. I always love receiving pictures from fellow explorers. 
when they get a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. So I think it's probably that time today in the show. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, in every live stream, I always do a giveaway for something. We were giving away plan in uh, gift. We were giving away plan in hotel stay rebates on the last live stream. Still open, as I mentioned before. Uh, but today we're giving away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt again. I need to make I need to make some more Curious Princess shirts. I haven't I haven't put the new art up on these. So uh, once I remake those, that would have been useful for this, but. I didn't quite get round to it. Uh, so if you want to win the Yellow Productions Crew shirt, you have to answer one of my questions about something I said in the video today. And uh, my question to you for the video today is... Um, <clears throat> in the video about Billy Bees, the princess was standing on what? So the one that was a 400,000 view video, what was she standing on? If you're the first person to answer that question, you will win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt shipped to you anywhere in the world. Um, all right. And, uh, da, 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 da. and now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. All right. Congratulations to... Win acid number one. Indeed, she was standing on a slide. You were the first person to guess that right. Uh, some other people said she was standing on a pot or a bench. Uh, Close. A lot of other people said slide, but twin acid number one was the first person on my screen to say slide. So, uh, twin acid number one, send me an email to chris at yellow productions.com. I'll get that shirt headed right out to you. If you didn't get to win a shirt and you want to pick one up, you can do that here at the Yellow Production Shop. You'll find a link in the description below. And if you want to sign up for my email list because you wonder, Chris, when is the next live stream? Are you going to have one next week? Probably. I'll let you know the date, time, and the topic on my email list if you sign up for it right there. Uh, well, fellow explorers, it is always a pleasure to hang out with y'all thinking... Thank you for making this live stream fun as well and supporting the Curious Princess channel if you're a viewer or your kids are over there. Well, fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.